Uh, all right, folks, we're back again uh, here at pretty much the end of turn one. Let's take a quick look at the board here uh, before zooming in. We have a pretty critical fight uh, brewing here on the western front. Uh, so we have this as our battle hex, and I'll show you exactly what we have. Um, and I'm, the central powers are throwing the kitchen sink at this one. Uh, because if we take this hex, uh, it's going to give the French a lot to think about. And the Brits as well, for that matter. Um, over here on the eastern front, my plans for a great Russian offensive didn't really work out. One, I had this unit here. But thanks to, I reinforced this one to the maximum. So this is a 28 value unit in a fort, which is another 15. So that's 43, and I could only bring 15 to bear from the Russian unit. Um, so I have 15 and 15. Um, with the fort, it just wasn't going to work out. And then I thought, well, maybe I'll attack Tannenberg. But even then, it's like, well, if I attack Tannenberg... Um, uh, with a 15 unit, it's uh, not a guaranteed success against a 1520, and it's like, why I throw those lives away? Um, I know thinking about it in terms of lives isn't really, I mean, it's not the mindset the officers at the time were in, so why should it be mine, especially when these aren't even real? But anyway, um, over here, uh, the Russians were able to push the Austrians back, and this is perilously close to an automatic entry point uh, for the Romanians. If the Russians take this hex, uh, the Romanians will automatically join the conflict uh, on the Anton power side. Now this is a blocked hex side, so they will have to take this hex side. Uh, so I am going to have to reinforce it, either build a new unit or beef this one up. And likewise, the Russians will probably be looking to beef up this one. Um, over here, uh, these forts are surrounded by Russians. However, the Russians are relatively weak, um, and there's the twin forts of Lemzig and Primzel to consider. Uh, this Austrian-Hungarian unit was able to pick off a lone uh, Russian unit. Uh, over here, um, I didn't move any of the Italians around. I couldn't find anything about whether I could move neutrals while they're neutral, and I suppose the answer would be no, because apart from predisposed neutrals, the other neutrals all are, are true neutrals. They don't enter the conflict until the declared war on. Um, so, yeah, basically it's just uh, British, French, Belgians, Russians, Austrian, Hungarians to start with, and of course the Germans. Uh, we have all of our Turks and Russians aligned down here. Uh, over on the colonial map, um, I thought about making some attacks um, on the colonial map. However, um, due to the way um, these units are going to work, um, I didn't want to throw away any potential reserves um, since we're going to need them to bolster France. I didn't want to... Uh, throw reserves away on the colonial map just yet. Maybe, um, maybe at the end of 1914, or when things start to stable out. Um, right now, it's a pretty critical time. So, plus, we do have time to take over the colonial map. It doesn't have to be right now this turn. Um, just as long as we manage to do it by the end of the game. All right. That does look really nice through the viewfinder here. It is a pretty map. Um, all right, so let's take a look at the fight. So remember, this is the hex we're fighting over. And I have thrown uh, two German armies, including uh, one of the Bavarian units, uh, the Bavarian Minor Forces unit, the Wurttemberg Minor Forces unit, and I played an allocation of Krupp's guns. So we have a staggering 74 firepower to the Allies 31. Now, 
This is a special note from the corrections department. Um, I ended up unobliterating this French army and then attacking it a second time and getting it re-obliterated. So the rules as written, um, I will say, in the interest of transparency, this is the only real knock I've had on the game so far. There's a couple of plot spots, excuse me, where the rules are unclear. Um, but, uh, Wes Ernie uh, answered my question very quickly, um, so I really can't complain too much about that. Uh, so this section here, um, only the top paragraph is actually true. You can ignore these two things, okay? So they're not there. Basically, what this is trying to say is if you have one unit left, and you cannot satisfy um, uh, um, uh, if you cannot avoid its destruction, if there are enough hits to destroy it, it's obliterated. Okay. Um, so, since there weren't, if you remember that French unit, there weren't enough hits to destroy it, so it survived. Um, it can draw on resources, like reserves, to save it. And in so doing, we were able to save the, the unit. If there are enough hits where you can't save it, either because you don't have reserves or whatever the case may be, um, then it's obliterated. Um, so. Uh, alright, so let's figure this out, we're all set up, uh, the, F the French have a firepower of 31, so I've decided we're going to roll 7 dice, so I have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 7, and with a value of 74, oh, that's the cat. Um, with a value of 74, we're going to roll 15 dice for the Germans. That sounds about right. Probably even do like 16. Now let's do 15. Alright, so first the defenders, 8. Okay. And we get 12, 16, uh, 21, 22, 23, 25. So we have 25 hits. So we'll mark that here. Okay. And then we said 15 for the Germans. Uh, so we have 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm gonna get some more dice, I'll be right back. Okay, here goes. I got a nice chess sex eh, chess X set out. Alright, we'll start throwing these down. Okay. Alright, so let's see. Let's count it up. Eleven 14, 16, 17, 18, 21, 25, 27, 30, 32, 34, 37, 39, 41. So we have 41. Um, so it's well below uh, our uh, target number of 74. So we probably could have... Uh, well, we did get a lot of 2s and 1s, which is not great. But, all right. So... Let's go through the, the battle chart here again and try and keep this tidy. Okay. Alright. So here it goes. So we have the German. So we're in clear terrain. So this will just, twos will just be hits. So 
So I'm just pulling out all the twos. Okay. Now ones backfires and rough. So this isn't rough. So we our ones are also confirmed hits. Okay. So then threes trench effect. Well, we haven't entrenched yet, so these are also hits. Uh, four is a miss. Five is a miss. Six is a hit. And three is another hit. So let's see. We do nine, eleven, thirteen, fifteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. Uh, 32. So, um, the Germans end up doing 32 to the Allies, 25, um, which is obviously not, well, it's not how we wanted things to go, but here we are. Okay. Alright, so um, 25 coming into that unit there. So um, Let's see what we'll do. So this is the fourth. Come down here. So I have 20 divisions in here. So we'll burn that down to zero. Okay, so you ended up in the zero box. And then um, I will burn five reserves. We'll go from 16 down to 11. And that way we don't have to eliminate the unit. Now, for the French, we have the third. And if we come over here, third has 14. That's 14 out of 32. Uh, so leaves us with 18 left. And we could burn our French reserves. Uh, so it's costly but we do it and let's see we do win the battle however as the attacker because we survived and we dealt more hits so the French are going to end up retreating and what we might do is we might do something like this Retreat them to different hexes so we can get a line. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we take the hex at great cost, and we miss our knockout blow. We have one available unit left, uh, but it can't attack here, and we don't necessarily want to move it out of position. So that's probably it for attacks for this turn. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little tidying up, and then we will go through an event shit and the end of turn one. So stay tuned. All right. Uh, so my lovely editor has told me that I have made another mistake and I must address it. I'm sorry if I'm driving you guys crazy with this, but uh, when you get going by yourself, um, especially when you're shooting a video and trying to keep the, the narrative going forward, uh, you forget about these things. So, once you destroy an entire great power army's attached divisions, the next thing you do is you look at the um, uh, 
fortitude, right? So the German armies have a fortitude of 12. So they had nine leftover hits, so I could take those out of the reserves. The French, however, had 18 leftover hits, or some, sh some such number, um, which means since they have a fortitude of 8, their unit is destroyed, and then uh, the next army begins the next process. So I returned all of those French divisions, and they'll need them, um, and then I uh, um, went ahead and took four divisions out of this unit here, okay? Uh, so, here's the situation on the Western Front. Here's the situation on the Austrian-Hungarian Front. And here's the little old 8th Army hiding out near Tannenberg. Okay? Alright, so, both sides have passed, so I'm going to flip everything back over, and then we are going to do... Um, an event shit. And actually, technically, we can do the second shit of turn one and the first shit of turn two. So that'll be fun. So let me flip this stuff over and I'll be right back and then we'll do our, our next uh, our next little thing. All right, so now we are all flipped back over. I'm just taking a quick scan of everything as we go. And we're gonna grab our first event shit. So this is the last shit of turn one. Now, um, technically, we're going to get divisions, and we can attach the divisions directly during this phase to armies. However, if we wait to the logistics phase, we can also do that, although um, uh, I haven't... There is a restriction about like transferring divisions between armies, but we can wait to assign during the logistics phase and that's what we'll do because that's when we'll create our armies as well so I'm gonna cop out and I'm not gonna show you that in this video that'll be in the next video uh, the next video will start with the turn two logistics phase but we are gonna draw two event ships and we're gonna see what happens Okay. so first up is event ship four Okay. Let's grab our events book. And space is at such a premium here, I'm doing my best. Okay. So, we go to our event shit charts. This is 1914, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go with division. So, France will get 14, okay? Great Britain will get 25. Italy will get eight. Russia will get 17, the Austrians will get 9, the Germans will get 27, and the Turks will get 5. Uh, da, da, da. Do we get them while they're at peace? Um, actually, I believe the answer to that is no. Um, but uh, I will look that up uh, while I am talking to you, because uh, that should be... Right here at the beginning. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Mm. Uh, I would say yes. Okay. Alright. So. Alright, so French get 14, so they'll be up to 39, which is good because they need those. Britain will get 25, which will put them at 40, which again is good because they need to get to the continent. Italy will get 8. Italy, Italy, Italy. I may not have given them their first one, come to think of it. Mm. 
I did give them the first one. Okay. So then we have Russians, they'll get 17. So they'll be up to 37. Very nice. Uh, Austrians get a measly 9. The Germans get 27. That'll put them up to 38. Uh, Turks get 5. Serbia. Bulgaria. And Romania each get 3. Only Serbia is in the war. So that'll run them up to 10. Greece. Oh, Serbia gets two, my mistake. Sweden, Bulgaria, and Romania. Now, these countries do have a prohibition. Um, they need to no longer be neutral. So, I gave Italy and the Turks their divisions, even though they're not in the war, because the prohibition only seems to be for these six countries need to be in the war. Alright, so let's go through this. So, Lehman von Sanders. So, German advisors arrive to man Turkish defenses. Role for Turkish entry. Okay, so, um, let's see. I believe it is a single D6. Alright. Where is it? Good grief. Oh, okay. Yes. Roll a die. Okay. So, we are at 60, so there will be no actual Turkish entry on this die roll alone, and definitely not. I rolled a 1. So we're up to 61. Alright. So then, it says, um, if this event triggers an actual Turkish entry, which it didn't, so we'll go on. If Turkey is neutral, EP can choose to bribe Turkey to stay out of the war. Move the black marker C, black C marker to the CP Naval Supremacy box and roll 2d6. Okay, now if we do that, the only restriction that has is eliminating or limiting uh, how many divisions Russia can send over. So we're definitely going to do that, and let's see what happens. Ah. So after all that, we end up at 58, after starting at 60. Alright, now we'll roll for Romanian entry, and we roll a 5. So, Romanian entry is up to 43. Okay. Roll a die. So, EP may target any German army in France or Belgium adjacent to a French or British army. Uh, let's choose the second there. So we'll roll a d6, do a d6 worth of division losses. So that'll take it down to 2. Okay. Norwegian ships. Roll 2d6 if Norway is neutral. Alright, on a 12 it joins the EP. No. Um, British armored cars. We can point to a Br German army next to a British army in France or Belgium, again the second, and remove one division from it. So the second is looking sorely depleted. Reichstag truce. Okay. So this heart means we get a uh, D6 number of German divisions. One. 
of course. Uh, Oscar Niedermeyer. Uh, let's see. Roll d6. All right. No effect. All right. Roll 2d6. Add that number of divisions to any German armies. Let's get some big money here. Okay. Eight. It's not bad. Um, I'm going to dump those right into the second. Move that up to nine to replace our losses. All right. Uh, just deploy the Serbian rifle MF unit in France or in Russia. Okay. Serbian rifles. Here they are. So it's one of those minor power holding ones here. Serbian rifles. And uh, let's see. I stuck those in Riga for now. And then the French Foreign Legion in France. So, French Foreign Legion, where are you? Uh, They're going straight to Paris. And then we get 10 allocations for Mustafa Kemal. So I'll just grab a bunch of allocation markers and put that over here. Add a Turk. All right. And it really is as simple as that. All right. Let me pause it here so I can tidy up a bit, and uh, we'll bring you the next chit and uh, the end of this video. I'll be right back. Okay, one last video here. I'm going to grab another chit. Don't mind me, I'm strange, this is just some of my cat hair. <laughs> um, Alright, event chat 5. First, what do we do? Do you remember? We do reinforcements. France gets 14. And remember, we can figure out where we want to have these go later, so we don't have to do it right now. Great Britain gets 19. Italy gets eight. And the Russians get sixteen. Okay. Over here, the Austrians get twelve. Germans get a whopping 38. And since that will take them to the max, I'm going to put 7 in the second army now. Bring that up to 16. Okay. The Ottomans get another 8. And then Serbians get another two. All right, so let's see. All right, we're going to roll for U.S. entry. That's a good roll for the U.S. So they go to 33. Uh, roll to reduce uh, Turkish entry. That's a two. Uh, Banzai. Japan declares war on Germany. Deployed Japan's MF army in the Wee Hai Wee colonial box. It may attack into 
count to chow only. Uh, roll die on a six, the Japanese expeditionary fleet or force may SR to the European map. Uh, and we rolled one. So we're looking for the Weehai Colonial Box. Hmm. It couldn't mean Japanese Laotian Bay, could it? I gotta imagine that that's what it means. I don't see anywhere else. Yeah, because it also says once they take this place, it can SR to the main map. So, yeah, I'm gonna say that that's uh, some sort of typo. Okay. All right. Um, well, that's an unfortunate name. Uh, roll die. All right, we rolled a one. We roll again to reduce U.S. entry by two. So they slip back as well. Uh, EP may flip one Austrian army adjacent to a Serbian army, but it must not be in a mountain hex. Uh, okay. That is a rough hex. Which means, fortunately for the Serbs, um, I don't know that they'll be able to attack out of this hex. I believe if one unit is flipped, you can't attack out of it. I'll have to double check. Uh, okay. Uh, CP may declare war on Italy immediately. Are we ready? Mm, well, we do have a ton of divisions. Uh, no. We're not going to go for it. Alright, we're going to roll for Turkish entry. So they're going to go up three, so they're back to 59. All right, then we do a D6 worth of division, divisional hits to Britain, so we do three. So they're down to 56 from 59. Uh, CP may flip one EP unit on the colonial map. Uh, there are no EP units on this colonial map. And then we roll for Italian entry. We get a four. Uh, so that puts them at 65. So we're quite close. And then we roll for Romanian entry. And I get a two. So they're up to 45. And that is the second chip. So now, uh, in the next video, we'll come to the logistics phase, and I may not go through all of the decision-making process. I might just show you what I end up doing. But now, if you go to these boxes, I can build these armies using these reserves, which would be nice. Um, I can attach divisions to the armies I already have on the board. Um, and then you have flexibility to basically deploy them anywhere. Um, so I'll probably want to build an army for the Western Front, build something to kind of uh, hang around the Italian border, uh, because that is getting very, very close. And then I'm going to want to build something to help out on the Eastern Front. Uh, yeah, 
So lots of choices to be made here. I'm going to want to take some time to think about this. And also, I think this is a natural stopping point for this video. Uh, so if you've made it all the way through to the end of this video, thank you very much. I do uh, appreciate the kind words, nice comments. Um, so thank you for watching. I do appreciate that. If I've missed anything, made any mistakes, please let me know. Um, I am sorry for the somewhat or occasionally jarring... Uh, edits. Um, I am just holding this with my hand um, because it's very difficult to try and... Well, I mean, let's float out a bit. It's very difficult to try and get all of this. This is a, a, a standard six foot by two and a half folding table. Try uh, Very difficult to do all that and then flip through the rule book and make sure you guys can see stuff that's interesting. Uh, so I do appreciate your patience. Um, so, uh, we'll be back with the next video in a day or two in the interim. Um, looking through a couple of rule books to figure out something I can play on Vassal. Um, that's much simpler to manage. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. This is Mike with Play More Games, and we'll see you around. Auf Wiedersehen.